What's going on guys? My name is Brandon and today we're going to do something a little bit different than our normal content. With the current climate and situation and things that are going on around the country, I decided it was time that I would install a wireless standalone security system in our home. Something to just to overlook our door and give us a little bit of peace of mind. It's super easy and simple. Let me bring you in and show you what we're doing. So guys, like I mentioned in the introduction, these are some crazy times that it feels like that we're living in right now. And I wanted to provide myself with just a little bit of peace of mind and added security. So I picked myself up a wireless motion detected standalone security system and I want to show it to you. Super cheap, something easy you guys can do. I'm all for simple. I don't like real technical, complicated things. So let me bring you in and show it to you. Here it is guys. I'm not going to bore you with a lot of the details, but it's an outdoor Wi-Fi security system. It's got two-way audio. Not only can you remotely view this from your cell phone elsewhere, you can also hear what's going on. It's got a floodlight and a siren warning system that you can set up to detour somebody. Uh, it's got local storage, so like with an SD card, and it also has online cloud storage. It comes with some free cloud storage, but then you can purchase extra. It's got, like I said, motion detector, and it's, it's all metal, so it's not a plastic, uh, cheap type housing. It's got a infrared distance of 98 feet. It's supposed to be super clear and it's a color camera. And they make it real easy to put the app on your phone by you can just literally scan the scan the back of the box. It works for Apple and for Android. And this is right off their website, guys. As of the time of this video, uh, it's going for like 40 bucks or 39.99. It says it's three megapixel UHD Wi-Fi connection, colored night vision, two-way audio motion, human detection, uh, with siren message and alert, IP65 waterproof. So, it won't break the bank, simple, effective, and it should come in super clear. So I know very little about technology and cameras and all that stuff, so for me, if it's simple, I like it. Uh, I just want it to work without messing around. A little uh, thank you card. This is our user manual, and here's the camera, and it's all uh, constructed of metal. You can tell it's real heavy duty. I'm assuming that this is probably where the SD card goes in. Uh, and it also has hardwired connections that you can use as well. There's a connection for your antenna that loose your uh, Wi-Fi signal. But if you don't want to do it wirelessly, uh, you can also connect it to like a Cat5 cable and plug it directly into your router, which I, I'm probably going to end up doing. But for right now, we won't. And then it's got a power cable and... I'm not sure what this button does here. We'll have to read up on that, but that's some sort of little push button inside. But for right now, let's get the camera mounted and installed, and I'll show you where I'm gonna do it. My front door is right here with my driveway being right here, and my shed is right here. So my thoughts are I wanna overlook my front door and I wanna overlook my driveway. So I think what I'm gonna do is mount that right up under this eave soffit and face it that way. It'll have a wider field of view, but my driveway is like right there. So it'll actually cover the front door and it will cover my driveway. The first thing I had to do is bundle this group together. And actually the biggest plug is this one. So I'll, I'll get a drill bit the size of that uh, plug right there so it can fit up through the soffit. So to punch the hole through the soffit, I'm just gonna use a flat 7 8 wood boring bit because that is roughly the size of the largest connector plug that has to fit through it. And it looks like it could be done two ways. So here's the mounting base, it's all adjustable. You could actually have the wire like that out through the side and then run it along somewhere and then uh, tuck it in or put a hole elsewhere. Or you could just bore a hole directly through what you're doing, run the wires up through, and then this would be totally concealed. You wouldn't even see your wires. And I think that that's the way I'm gonna do it. Probably something like that would work good, I would think, as long as I don't hit a piece of wood that's up in here. The other box that was in here contained this piece, which that's like a waterproof connector uh, that goes on the opposite end of that Cat5 cable. So if you are hardwiring it into your 
uh, Wi-Fi or your internet. This is that connector that would make it waterproof. And then you've got your flexible adjustable antenna, little short piece of Cat5 cable, which we won't use, and a power adapter for United States power. And I know that they also have a power adapter for other countries as well. Oh, <laughs> and it also gave you a template if you wanted to do it, but we, we already bypassed that. So if you need a template to drill your hole and mark out your stuff, there it is. These soffits, they're just soft pine. So we're not gonna have to do anything fancy or pre-drill. We can just wind the screws right in. Now I'll get a screwdriver and we'll kind of roughly adjust it where it needs to be. Looks like you can mount the base however you want to mount it because everything is fully adjustable. So now we got it roughly aimed and snugged up how we want it. Now I'll just put on the antenna. I don't know if it's going to matter or make a difference, but can't hurt, right? Something like that, I don't know. About all I can do. Maybe I can go like that. Probably wouldn't need it if it's direct wired. I probably will direct wire it just so I know I've always got a good connection. So that's what it looks like. You do notice it and that's also a visual deterrent so I don't mind that either. It's probably gonna be hard to see but there is the corresponding ends to that camera. Looks like some animals or something have been trying to make a little nest up there so i'll have to get that out of there but now i gotta plug in my power cord and it probably might be hard for you to see me do that it's just a matter of taking the power cord adapter and plugging it in to the end of this yeah. it's as simple as that probably what i'll have to do is put like some uh, mothballs or something up there just to keep animals out of there so that they don't want to chew on these uh wires but it's good we can get to it at least because I'm sure maybe that push button probably has something to do with connecting to the Wi-Fi, but I don't know for sure. And that's it as far as the installation goes, guys. And I looked into it, that little push button thing, that's called a reset. So we'll find out more about it later if we need to use it. But yeah, we've gone as far as we can go. Now I just got to download the app. Super easy so far. This will also be a first for me. So here's the little thing that you're supposed to scan with your camera. I brought up my camera app. You can see how there's that. So I'll just hold it close. There it is. It's gathered it and click on it and go to the website. So that's gone to Google Play and we'll just click install. <laughs> Boy, that doesn't get much easier than that, does it? You don't even have to question whether you're clicking on a verified link or not. So, And this is verified by Play Protect, so you know it's a safe app. So it's all installed. We'll just click open. This will be the first time seeing it. Now i got to set up a email address and password. You just put in an email and a password and it says if you don't receive an email in just a few minutes be sure to check your spam folder uh, which I did get it I just heard it uh, so yeah. So here's the email it's just giving me a link to follow so I click that link so it says my account's been activated and we're sending you instructions on what happens next. So click on login and enter my email password and all right, so this is easy. Here's the next step. They just sent an email. I haven't logged in yet. It says, peel the protective film off your device's front lens before getting started. Make sure the power cable is inserted all the way into your device. And when positioning the device to read the QR code, so apparently there's a QR code that we read that's going to link it up, make sure they're on the same level and away from a window or bright source of light. And then it goes on to talk about iPhone. Make sure your iPhone's connected to the network. The first time you log in, then it gives you a tutorial to double check to verify that you do what you need to be doing and that it's done right. So that's pretty easy. This is pretty foolproof. Looks like they've done a really good job as far as making sure that uh, you know what it is that you're supposed to be doing. So if you get fouled up when you're installing it, it'd be pretty hard to do, you know, as far as the software because you just, as soon as you log in, it prompts you to this video. This is what you see at first, tutorial guide. And then it just goes on to... Um, you know, click on the button in the upper right corner of the app and on and on. So plug in the power to the camera, do to do. So we're going to do all that and get it up and running.
I'm looking at the manual and I got my phone. It says tap this to add a device. And I'm clicking intelligent camera. And device adding by scanning the code. It just was talking something about scanning code, so I think we're all good. It just said something. Click next. A code came up on my screen of my phone that I gotta align to the camera. It says please wait for Wi-Fi connecting. And it says it takes about one or two minutes. I don't know if you can It said it's connected. So I just got an email confirmation that it works and it's all good to go. So now we're gonna go into the device and try it out. Ha! Guys, check this out. Here you can switch the live and playback of the video with one click. Oh wow, L listen to that, it was hearing my voice. Oh, it's, listen. Oh, it's, listen. <laughs> That's weird. That's weird. Okay, so okay, let's see. So... Am I alive right now? Am I alive right now? Yep. Look at that. Yep. Okay, that. so that's okay, th so that's, th that's, the that's the delay. That's the delay. Ha! Ha! That that's pretty clear, guys. We got to try this at night. Oh, we can even take a still photo. Watch this. We'll do allow. <laughs> oh my god, guys, that's pretty cool. Oh, look, we can do full, full screen mode. That's even better. So here's something else we really didn't talk about, and that's the SD card. And the way that works is uh, you can put up to 128 gigabyte uh, SD card and the way that works is that it would just keep recording it just rewrite over itself so that's probably the mode that I will go so if you know something happens and uh, I need to go back to it I should be able to capture that within 128 gigs if knowing that something happened so it's large enough that it shouldn't overwrite the event or you could also do the cloud oh my god guys so check this out I was playing with some of the settings the pictures that I was showing you from before that was in SD quality it's now in HD. I mean, check this out. I mean, look how awesome this is, guys. I mean, it's kind of cool, huh? There's a little bit of a lag, and that's probably my internet. I think that'll be fixed once I put a Cat5 cable on there. But yeah, not too shabby. Look how crisp that is, and you can see all the details. Security has always been important to me, guys. And if you search through my video playlist, I'll put a link up above to a video where I provide you with some tips on things that you can do to prevent someone from kicking in your door to gain entry or to even actually slow them down a little bit. Might not completely keep them from getting in your place, but it might slow them down. And although this camera isn't gonna prevent someone from breaking into your place and taking what they want that's not theirs, what it might do is it might be enough of a visual deterrent for someone to see it and move on and say, I'm not gonna bother, waste my time there, when I can go to someplace else that's less secure. So that's kind of the basic features of it, guys. You can also have it triggered so that when it detects a body or a motion that it turns on the camera. And other than that, it just sits idly by. So then it would give you, I believe, a notification. So yeah, super simple technology and that's what I like. New videos every Friday. If you want to know more about this camera, I'll have links down in the description. If you're wondering what I'm working on before it even makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. I'll have links down below. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. Until next Friday, I will see you then. Take care. Stay safe. See ya.